Hello again. <clears throat> All right, now it's July 3rd and it's 4:25 a.m. So the last time I made the video it was like one something or two or whatever. So got an hour nap or so, and a couple hours I'm gonna go do some yard work in this uh, hot, hot, humid weather, and um, I'm excited about that. <laughs> so, but it's gonna be good. I need to get outside and get some sunlight. But it's gonna probably rain later, which kind of stinks. And, I haven't looked, been a little bit unpredictable now, anyways, but I'm going to be reading through Acts chapter 15, and I'm just telling you all this because it's getting closer to the 4th, and I'm going to have to really get through these, and I'm going to be gone a lot today, and um, so I'm going to try to get done what I can now in the next couple hours or so, and then uh, maybe when I get home late, late tonight, because I'm going to do yard work, spend time with my mom, and then I'm probably going to spend time with my cousin, and, you know, he can stay up a little later because he doesn't have work tomorrow, so I don't know what we're going to do, but... And I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I might hang out with my mom or cousin tomorrow on the 4th. I don't really have any plans to go see any fireworks or anything. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might stay home all day, but... Uh, i got to do, you know, what chapter i got to do, what chapters I can, if any, later when I get back, depending on what time it is, if I'm dead tired or not, and then, you know, hopefully... I can finish up whatever in the morning as soon as I wake up before I go back out and do anything else. So i got to make that as little as possible. Uh, chapter's on the 4th tomorrow, so still far away, though. Um, I will still have 13 chapters after this. And a lot of them are pretty long. So Acts chapter 15, the Jerusalem Council. And certain men which come down or came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved, which is wrong. Right, those guys are wrong. Acts chapter 15, verse 2. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and help. Okay. Uh, Anyway, uh, and being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phinis and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and the elders, and they declared all the things God had done with them. But there rose up a certain of, of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it is needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto the men and brethren, You know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us by faith. And now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the back of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? So the law, basically, why, why put them under the law? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord or of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence. Audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring that what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them, he said salvation is by grace. If, it is, if it's by grace, then it can't be of works. It's his point. So salvation is by grace through faith. So it's the faith that matters. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take a people out of them for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things, known unto God, are all his works from the beginning of the world. 
Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornications and from things strangled and from blood. And so this old past, this old testament verse this that's talking about, you know, I will build again the tabernacle of David and set it up, and that the Gentiles would come to him. Not talking about rebuilding a physical kingdom here. It's talking about the kingdom of God because the tabernacle of David represented the kingdom of God. And um, and it's not that the kingdom of God ever ceased or anything like that, but the kingdom of, of David, David's kingdom, his tabernacle, was torn apart. But he's basically saying that, uh, I guess, it's more speaking about how kind of the Jews have rejected them or, you know, um, kind of how that, that kingdom era has kind of ended. But um, it goes forth with, you know, the Gentiles being brought into the kingdom of God. <clears throat> And so I'm just thinking again that that's just how you know people believe the millennial kingdom that uh, that the, the throne of David or whatever is going to be rebuilt, but uh, it's not. It's in heaven, and it represented the kingdom of God. Um, Said, so wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them from which among the Gentiles are turned to God but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. <laughs> so... They're saying, uh, you know, we don't need to follow the law anymore. Salvation's of grace. And so the Gentiles don't need to be circumcised. And that's not what salvation's about. So he corrected them on that, on justification. The council's letters to the Gentile believers. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Ebus and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner, the apostles and the elders and the brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your soul, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you, our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent, therefore, Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good that the Holy Ghost and to us lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. So there's always this confirming of the saints after they're converted. And, and after they have tarried their space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others. So I'm thinking about how it's talking about them to abstain from meats offered sacrifice to idols and stuff. And then doesn't it kind of change? 
uh, <clears throat> you know, like no meats unclean, basically. Um, so why were they saying that? Kind of makes me wonder. And so it's cool how, uh, for telling the men that they don't need to be circumcised. But then later on we read about how Peter and Paul had a uh, dispute themselves about some things. And I wonder when that took place. But it's cool that we have an account of Peter basically rebuking the, the unbelieving, or, well, I guess, I don't know if they're unbelieving or not, but he's rebuking these Jews who want uh, the Gentiles to be sacri or circumcised and... Um, oh. But then we have Paul kind of doing the same thing, so they're kind of in agreement there. So here we read about Paul and Barnabas separate, after so much that we've read unto, of, of them together. Let's see. Acts chapter 15, verse 36, And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Saul chose Silas and parted, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through... Sirius and Cecilia, or Cilicia, confirming the churches. Now, what's it mean the contention was so sharp between them? It was sharp between who? Paul? Be between, you know, because Barnabas wanted to take John, and Paul didn't want to be with him, or something like that, so was the the contention was between uh, Paul and Barnabas, I guess, after all this time of being together. Interesting, and I wonder what that was all about. But that's, uh, that's the end of Acts chapter 15. So over halfway through, moving forward, let's go on to chapter 16. God bless.